Why is it that some artists are more successful than others? That's the question I asked myself when I was becoming a professional artist. Why is it that some creators just tend to have the, maybe this extra edge? And I realized that I had a couple of major breakthroughs in my career. And I, when I analyzed each one of them, I realized that there was this sort of pattern that took place. And the pattern was founded upon something that my dad told me in actually a very emotional conversation that I had with him right before I left to Finland to be a professional artist. And this was the same advice that he told um, other artists, but he, he, he just portrayed it to me in a very emotional manner that stuck with me for years. He looked at me and he told me, David, you have to follow your guiding star. What does that really mean? <laughs> Seems very enigmatic, very mysterious. But since he said it with tears in his eyes, I never forget it. I actually only saw my father really quite cry twice. That was the second time. And so that stuck with me. And I realized that actually there was a lot of truth in that. Now, the concept is not that really innovative. We hear it all the time in movies and things, right? Follow your heart, follow your, uh, your love. And, and I think that love, in fact, plays an incredible uh, role and instrument in finding this guiding star. But I, I needed something more. I needed a way to sort of unpack this enigmatic concept. And so I started to develop this idea, which I call the regenerative cycle of creativity. And I realized that every time I had a big creative breakthrough, I went through a cycle. And the foundation is love. L-O-V-E. Now, it's a regenerative cycle because the idea is that we don't want to just willy-nilly continuously make the same work of art. We want to expand. We want to evolve. We want to transform. It's the only way that we're going to make anything really fantastic and great. And so every time you go through the cycle, you get, we sort of evolve. Now, let's start with L. L is learning. Of course, in any creative endeavor, you got to be good at the skill that you are practicing. And so as a young boy, I was so grateful to have my father and he taught me how to draw and, and paint. But the best thing that he could have ever done was in fact, allow me to continue in the state of play. And that allowed me to develop all different kinds of curiosities. And a lot of it was around sports. We play a lot of American football and he'd take me and my brother into, into beautiful places in nature. I grew up in New York City and that was something that we really didn't have much of. And I had a lot of incredible experiences and I had a lot of curiosities. And as I mentioned, the best thing he could have done was he didn't push me as sometimes some fathers do. Paint and draw, paint and draw, and it sort of breed me into an artist creating beast of some kind. And so that led me to realize another key principle, which I, I, I say is ourselves. And this idea is, is something, again, purported, and you hear this a lot. Be yourself, just be true to yourself. But what exactly does that mean? And so, as I told you, my dad taught me how to paint and draw, and I ended up majoring in painting in college. I went to a specialized high school, and uh, I was doing art uh, quite a lot, but uh, you might be surprised to hear that that was actually the last thing I wanted to be. And it's because of this. This is a quick mind map. If any of you are artists and thinking about how exactly you can sort of navigate your way, this would be a really helpful activity. So, so this, is, this is where I'm at. Uh, I want to be uh, maybe an, an artist. Uh, I'm, I'm majoring in college, but, but there's all these conflicts at work. And that's because I had all these other loves and interests. I loved to make films. I loved to play sports. I loved exp exploration, adventure, and nature. And I was interested in some of the deeper questions of, of life, why, why we're here, these existential spiritual questions. And I realized that if I could not merge these loves, if there was no way to merge a movement and, 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 and my other interests into art, I, there was no way that I could do it. And so that leads to, 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 to chapter three, which is venturing out. So there was no, when I went to college, it's not like you could take a course and be like, well, how could I you know, incorporate movement and, and sort of sports in, into my work? But how exactly do you do that? And so this is where things get really scary. You have to venture into the unknown, into a realm of chaos. And that's where a lot of the magic takes place. And so I ended up 
basically doing, well, this is legal street art, but I end up wandering into uh, basically these legal graffiti walls, and this completely changed my life. The very first wall I went to, I was freaked out. I, I was, I don't know what you guys think of me here, but I didn't have the graffiti swag, right? And so the other, the other graffiti artists are looking at me like, this dude is in the wrong place. And, and I'm here painting like, you know, the Sistine Chapel, I'm painting like God coming down and, and, and it was freaky. I was, I was it, sort of in a, a realm of chaos. My mind was telling me, get out of there. But my, my heart was telling me something different. And so I ended up just pursuing this. I, I quit all the sports I was doing and I pursued and I wanted to become a professional international mural artist. And that led me to move to Finland, which I fell in love and I've been living there ever since. I have two kids and, and in Finland, I, you know, very bright eyed, I'd say, I'm gonna be this international mural artist. And um, well, it wasn't happening. And that's about embracing. And I was in denial. I was like, I'm a good enough artist. This, this, you know, the Finland, Finland, it's a bad market. There's not enough people here. Um, who, who else to blame? Oh yeah, that mural festival, those guys didn't like me. So that's why I didn't get the opportunities. I started to point fingers. And, and I, I realized that just, that, that wasn't working. I had to embrace the fact that, well, in a sense, I was failing. But that brought me back to the top of this regenerative creative process. Well, what were the things that were making me curious? At the time in Finland, I started to venture into nature more and more. Finland is beautiful. And I started to realize that I was on social media, for example, I was following so many more nature photographers than painters. I realized that I wanted to go into nature and that was a key love that I had as a young boy. And so I went back and I ventured. This time into a very different context. I took stretch wrap plastic and I wrapped it around trees and by use of spray paint, ended up creating portraits in forest in Finland. And just like when I arrived at my first wall, I felt like an idiot. I was in the middle of the forest. This is my father-in-law's forest, so yet she owns the forest. I was in the, I was in the middle of nowhere. And, and I make this piece and mind you, during this time I had other, other projects I was showing at some galleries and I had a big solo show and I had to create 30 or 40 of these paintings. And well, that was my mind speaking to me. Be pragmatic, gotta make some money. But my heart was saying, venture into unknown realms. And I did this piece and I thought that this could dramatically change the course of my career. And, and in some sense it actually did. This nature photographer randomly wanders into this forest and thinks he's hallucinating. Yeah, and starts snapping photos of it and sends it to the media and it goes on national news in Finland. And I was like, this is my big break. <laughs> following my guiding star, this is working. Following these random thoughts, th 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 this is happening. But let's take a moment to see what we have here. We're wrapping trees with plastic, right? And if I didn't embrace the, the, the fact that, uh, um, well, let, let, let's put it this way. I, I look at the comments and people are ridiculing me for, of course, placing plastic in the environment. And, and in some sense, they were, they were right, right? There, there isn't a full cohesion with the natural environment. And so I was back to embracing yet, well, another failure. But again, with this sort of regenerative, creative process, every time I'm, I'm learning something and, and I learned that nature was an unbelievable space to create art. And so I asked the question, well, who made art in nature? I had to look backwards. The cave painters, right? They use natural pigments. Next time you go camping, after you finish camping, grab a couple of pieces of charcoal, throw it against a rock, grab another piece of rock, and what do you have? Paint. I didn't even realize what paint was, and, and before I knew it, I was you know, grabbing pieces of charcoal and making my own paint, but of course it's not fully paint. The, the idea is that it's ephemeral paint. It's basically powder and water. So what you have left is just chalk on the rocks, which allowed me to venture into all these kind of environments, make a work of art, but the work would be ephemeral. It would just wash away after the rain. And as the presenter mentioned, I would use a drone and from above, I would record and document what it was that was working and my whole world just exploded. In Finland, it's known for its archipelago. There are islands all over. 
And so I thought, well, what if I take a paddleboard and what if I, or I head out to these islands, what can I create? And so my very first large scale work was of my wife. And I arrived there and just like the wall and just like the plastic, I felt like I'm a complete idiot. What am I doing with these spray bottles? Some people saw me and approached me and thought I was some sort of scientist running experiments. But in fact, I was painting my wife. And mind you, just real talk here, we were so broke at this time. <laughs> right? like, like I had, we had no money. My, my wife, everything was on the verge of tears. And I decide, honey, I want to paint your portrait big on the rock. It made no sense. But I followed my guiding star, and it started to work. And I think I was pulling off a porch. I could see the eye, the nose. It was going well. And the next morning, I arrive. And can you guess what all that stuff is on the ground? The seabirds came and crapped all over my wife's portrait. It seemed like a disaster. And from above, it was, it was, it was gross. You don't even want to be walking near there. But from above, there was, in fact, a whole nother mystery. In fact, the fur droppings almost looked like dynamic brush strokes. I was collaborating. Who was I collaborating with? The, the birds, nature, I was in a, I was co-creating with someone, something. And I ended up deciding, because we were so broke, what if I just make a, a, a print, a limited edition print, and I ended up launching this print, and I sold in 40 hours over 100 prints of these. <laughs> Dad, I guess I'm going to continue following that guiding star. And that led me to paint my newborn daughter. And my son, who, when he was bored, he almost, he had a knot in the umbilical cord. And at that moment, I realized that he could have died. And so I documented this piece as it faded into the rock. My son ended up being fine, but I started to grapple with life's big questions. And entering the space of nature was something completely unexpected. I continue to sell these limited edition prints and I take my family on these wild adventures and now we're going to, to Norway and uh, I take them in a van and we'll go to Norway and I was there for one week and, and in the light of the midnight sun, and I don't know if you have any, any of you have been there in typical Norway fashion, it's always raining. And so I only would one day to pull off a piece and other mysterious things just happen. I create a piece in this context, a portrait and when I'm planning out a piece, I'll take an initial, I'll take photo references of above. And uh, I'll see where I want to situate my portrait. And I'll use the textures and stuff of the rock to make sure my proportions are right. In this specific context, that the tide was higher, higher when I took my reference photos. And the sun was making weird shadows. And what ended up happening was the corner of the rock got exposed. And so it basically made a neck. The dark portion here looks like the pit of the neck, and we almost have the clavicle and the trapezius. An extraordinary collaboration, yet again, something completely unexpected. Now let's get back to that regenerative creative process. One of the key aspects is play. And so if one day, so in Finland, there was the, there's the Baltic Sea right there, and it's constantly freezing over and, and cracking. One day, I'm, we go with my family, and we're just hang, hanging out, and. I noticed the Baltic Sea would fracture at certain times, depending on the weather. And what you've had is these ice flows. And so I'm playing with the kids, and, and then I'm like, what happens if I jump on some of these ice flows? What would it look like if I create a work of art on one of these ice flows? And so now this time, it's learning a whole new set of sort of skills and, and technical things like, well, what do I need to get out there and not die, right? So, 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 I bought this dry suit in which I could wear all my warm clothes underneath that. And there I'm jumping from ice flow to ice flow with my garden sprayer in, in hand with basically just charcoal and water. 
and jumping for ice soda, ice flow, trying to figure out exactly how I could do a piece. And, and I, I, it was just curiosity and playfulness leading the way, not some sort of larger, better understanding of what it was that I was in fact doing. And so this was the first result. I thought this was a huge failure. The ice boat was supposed to stay together. I'm supposed to have at least four or five hours. I only had two hours. Portrait's not realistic enough. I had this tucked away for months. This was leading up to my next piece, which I wanted to a, a, a larger piece. I had no eyes to see what it is that I was creating. And so there I am. And, well, I'm trying to push an ice flow because I've come. the piece broke on me again, and I'm trying to put the piece back together. But it didn't, didn't fit back together, right? Well, what I didn't realize was, in fact, the, the project and, and what I was, uh, was working on was a perfect picture of the state of the reality in which we live right now. Right? We live in a, a fractured, broken world interpersonally, in our environment. And so the final result I ended up sharing, my wife was like, you should probably share. That was pretty cool, the way like the ice was like moving like that. You know, I guess I'll share it. And it, it exploded on, on social media and it was shared all around the world. And so in conclusion, Learn by playing, play around. Be, give yourself permission to be yourself. If you need to move, move. Venture into the realms of the unknown and embrace your failures. They may be your biggest successes. Thank you very much.